Hey guys, Zachary Keeps here out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I currently own and manage over 230 plus assets here in the marketplace. So many people ask me all the time about my vertical integration. How is it feasible that I own so many properties and I self-manage these assets? Number one, um, I'm a huge believer in, in personal connectivity and building long-term relationships. I treat my tenants like family. And if you have that mentality and you're not just focusing on the money and chasing the dollars, you're gonna be very, very successful. Everybody's treated as if my sister, my mother, brother, father, grandfather, whoever it is, is living in one of the homes. If you take that mentality, people will respect and like to do business with you. And again, you're not all about just the dollars and maximizing every single opportunity and, and focusing on the money. You're about building long-term strategic relationships. Real estate is a relationship-based business period, the end. It's all about relationships. The difference is you got these big hedge funds and REITs and other people where a tenant is just a number to them. They pay, they don't pay, they send them a notice. There's no real communications. There's no understanding. There's no level of respect. There's no invitation for Christmas. I've never heard of a hedge fund, you know, manager be invited over to a tenant's house for Christmas or for Hanukkah or whatever it may be and say, hey, we appreciate everything you've done for us by letting us rent this property. You've treated us so well. We want to have you over for dinner. I in turn have been invited to multiple, you know, births of children and Christmas and you know New Year's celebrations and to me it's just super endearing it's part of my why of what I do uh, and building great solid strategic relationships so one I love having that control I like that family the familial type um, type environments it makes life just much easier and having that connection with people and that love and respect people are just more calm respectful and appreciative of the roofs over their head, the opportunities you're giving them and their families just works out much better in the end. I build a solid, solid product. So a lot of times I'll take an existing asset class and I will enhance it. So I'll take a dilapidated home or distressed property, bring in the crews, we stabilize it by a solid remodel. Again, one of the major reasons I have the ability to manage all these houses because we do a really, really good job on the remodel. I am not a Band-Aid kind of guy. I'm about full surgery. What that means is I don't come in, most landlords, they wanna spend the least amount of money on the pro on the properties thinking they're gonna make more money, when in turn that bites them because they're com constantly coming back. Because again, if you just put a Band-Aid versus full stitches, that Band-Aid's gonna fall off, it's gonna start bleeding. Well, the mentality that I take is let's just do full surgery out of the gate so it's strong, it's stabilized, we're gonna put all the creams on there, the wound is gonna heal properly, you're not gonna have to worry about coming back to the emergency room for multiple you know, issues or infections when we could have resolved the issue right the first time. So if we take that positive mindset in terms of remodel and put forth the highest and, and best product, like example, a water heater's on the brink, my crew's already there. I'm not gonna just like plug in some other copper and, and do a small welding fix. They're already there. It's cheaper for me, honestly, to just replace it and not worry about it for five or seven years for the shelf life of that. Same thing on the AC. If I have an 18 year old unit, I'm not gonna put in a new condenser. I'm gonna replace the unit. Same thing with the roof. I spend money to make money. Most people take the opposite mentality where they think you're saving money, making more by not doing it, but really you're inconveniencing the tenants. It's costing more money to bring individual contractors back to the property multiple times to fix things when they're already there. So do it right the first time. The tenants will be happy. They're not gonna be uh, aggravated by multiple you know, inconveniences to letting other vendors and contractors through the property to fix things and um, just getting agitated. So put a good product forward. You probably get more for rent for it. You're setting a good branding for yourself and your company and you're making the tenants extremely happy. Next, if you outsource your management, Okay, you're probably gonna be spending eight to 12% in terms of gross fees right off the top. So you wanna talk about you know uh, net profitability, you're gonna lose 10%, 12%, 8%, whatever it is of your gross income. If you can self-manage, and it's pretty easy now with streamlining rent collections, uh, by having your own handyman or an ancillary handyman that could work for you part-time, your life will be much easier. Why do you need to give up 10%? The other thing too is by having a vertical integration, having your own handyman or your individuals working with you, you're not worried about, you're controlling things. You're buying all the products, you're buying all the uh, improvements. So if a water heater goes out, you're paying direct for the water heater. If you're outsourcing through a management company, they're going to contract with somebody. You never know about contingencies and kickbacks and things like that. I want to cut out all the fat. I always like these direct relationships. I do not want to worry about this massive fat and multiple people in between my tenants and my properties. I want direct communication. They can either call myself or they can call my handyman directly. I'm going to pay for the products. So I'm in control of that. I'm going to get some sort of rebate at the end of the year for the amount of money that I spend for these products, which is an additional savings to me and avoid the 10%. The amount that most people would spend on a 10% of a couple home portfolio, 
I guarantee I probably spend less in terms of improvements um, during the duration of those tenants for the annual um, cost of maintenance on my properties. Something crazy to think about as well. The other thing that's amazing by having these direct relationships, it pays massive dividends. The ancillary income derived by doing that, what I mean is the extra income, is by having these great relationships, people treated extremely well, again, that family-like mentality, they refer everybody, their mother and brother. And what does that do? That enables you to cultivate and grow and scale your business organically through those referrals versus, you know, if you outsource to a management company, they have a vested interest to actually turn those units for you so they can pick up another management fee, application fees, turn fees, carpet and paint, paying those vendors and maybe getting a percentage of the cost of those improvements. By tenant retention, keeping great tenants, people stay in place, they love and respect you, and they will refer you to their friends and family. They say, I just want, I'm waiting for your house, Zach. I'm waiting for your next property. I know how well you've treated my brother, my mother, whoever it is, and I want one of your properties. And then I'm not paying, again, the vacancy, the utilities, the cost to turn those units. You know, you're spending a couple thousand dollars every single time that unit goes vacant. We could have mitigated through proper conversations and worked out issues that most hedge funds, REITs, or management companies don't have the time for in order they care because it's not their money, it's your money. Nobody cares more about your destiny than you. You are the captain of your own domain, and I'm sure you want to control the direction of that ship. You do not want to default and let somebody else dictate what direction you're going. If you want to go north and they want to go south, you're screwed. So I always want to be in control of my assets. Again, the vertical integration, and I love uh, the tenant retention, so keeping them in place mitigates all those overhead, those you know intervening variables with the cost of transition, paying another agent a commission to bring in another tenant or multiple tenants, the, the vacancy time, the, the transition from you know occupied to non-occupied with insurance, there's so many different variables. So you're always best to keep the tenants in place. Slowly over time, you can increase um, the rental income with those people and you're getting the highest yield by that retention and you're cutting out all the fat with all the BS. Again, I talked about loss mitigation. If you're outsourcing to other vendors, a lot of times you don't know if there's some back end kickbacks or these management companies have contracts and at the end of the year, those vendors say, hey, we're gonna give you 10% of whatever you know you guys spent with us. I wanna avoid all the conflict of interest and have those direct relationships. I'm paying the repairman direct, I'm buying the materials, again, cutting out the fat. A lot of times people say, well, this all sounds great, but what about, you know, what are the cons of self-management? One obvious con is obviously you're spending more of your own personal time. If you're interacting with people, you have to say to yourself, is that worth the yield? Is it worth it to you to have these relationships or potentially have tenants call you at two in the morning for a water leak? And for me, it is, right? You have a lot of doors. I say to myself, how much am I saving? Clearly a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, but more important, that's the direct savings by not paying the eight to 12%. But the other benefit is, again, that familial-like dynamics, the referral of other deals, and opportunities. I've actually bought homes from uh, tenants who referred family members that needed to sell or agents that they knew. So again, it's all about that ancillary income. It's about building that amazing brand uh, in the marketplace and the long-term referrals. You know, it's very difficult when you have these close relationships too with tenants, you get those difficult calls like, hey, they lost the job. I've had suicide calls from people who've passed away, unfortunately, in my house, deaths. It's part of the nature. If you can stomach that I and mean, you can separate that and show empathy and love and respect, then obviously uh, vertical integration self-management is for you. If you're emotional and you can't stand getting calls or would stress you out, then you may want to outsource and pay the eight to 12%. Everyone is different, but it's important to understand the pros and the cons of being vertically integrated in self-management. For me, I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Probably gonna write a book about it at some point and show people that, you know, here, I'm not some Harvard award and grad. I'm just a hard worker and understand the importance of strategic relationships, treating people with love and respect and transparency and treat them like family and your business will always prosper when you go above board and do the right thing. If you like what you hear and you wanna learn more and see other videos or have any other ideas, please don't forget to like, subscribe, show some love, share with other people that may be interested in getting involved in real estate. I think there's an abundance of opportunity for so many people in this business and I just wanna share the love and share the wealth. We'll see you soon.